Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're going over the different pastimes in the Krishna book which is the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam and today we're on chapter 24 worshipping Govardhan Hill <laughs> Okay. So we know in the last chapter we heard about how the Brahmanas were very busy with a very sacrifice. They didn't give any attention to Krishna and Balaram. So now we're going to hear about how Krishna deals with the Nanda Maharaj and the other cowherd men in Vrindavan who are also busy in some sacrifice where they're going to worship Indra. So the, the Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd men, they thought that it's important to worship Indra because Indra is the god of rain. And we need rain to get grass to feed the cows. So we know if there's no rain, then there's no, the, the grass doesn't grow, and then it's difficult to feed the cows. Then the cows may even die from starvation. So a devotee of Krishna, he thinks, his thinking is he just wants to worship Krishna, he doesn't want to worship anybody else. So a devotee of Krishna hasn't to, doesn't have to do any of these rituals which are in the Vedas to worship demigods. He just worships Krishna. And by worshipping Krishna, then the worship of all the demigods is also done. It's all included by just by worshipping Krishna. But if you do Vedic rituals, if you do all the different ceremonies in the Vedas worshipping demigods, it's, it's not equal to worshipping Krishna. So, 
Okay, so, uh, so Krishna doesn't like to see his devotees worship all these demigods. So Krishna wants that people in Vrindavan, that they should just do devotional service, they should just please him. So especially when Krishna has appeared there in Vrindavan, at that particular time, 5,000 years ago, where Krishna has appeared in Vrindavan, he doesn't like to see the people waste their time worshipping the demigods. And Krishna also knew that this demigod Indra was proud and he wanted to crack the pride of Indra. So Krishna saw the cowherd men with Nanda Maharaj, he saw that they were going to do the Indra Yagya. And so Krishna pretended he didn't know what they're going to do. So he's asking them, Whoa, what, what are you doing? So he says to his father, Oh, my dear father, Nanda Maharaj, what, what is this? What are you going to do? Who is this Yagya for? How do you do it? Please tell me what, how you do it. I want to know. Please tell me what is the purpose of this sacrifice you're doing? So Nanda Maharaj, you know, he's, he, he, at first he's just quiet. He thinks, oh, my little boy is too small. He won't understand if I tell him. But Krishna is persistent. Krishna keeps asking. He says, no, you should, you should tell me, you shouldn't keep it secret. We're in the one family. It's not a problem if you tell me. You should let me know what you're going to do. So you you shouldn't keep it secret from me. I'm your son, you know, we're the you're my father, it's your duty to teach me everything. Some people know what they're doing and some people don't know what they're doing. But if the people know what they're doing, it's better. If, if, you, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't get you don't get so much benefit. Just like people chant Hare Krishna, they get some benefit, but if they know what they're doing, they get more benefit. So, so please tell me, what is this? What are you going to do? Is this a Vedic sacrifice or is it just some custom among our people? 
เหลือกฤษณาจะถามว่าได้โปรดบอกท่านมาเถิดว่าพวกท่านเนี่ยกำลังจะทําอะไรเป็นพิธีบูชาเป็นพิธีบวงสวงงานบุญหรืออะไรกันแน่ Yeah, some sometimes there are rituals which are not in scriptures. It's just a custom, just a ritual. People do it. So Nanda Maharaj says to Krishna, he says, "Well, he said, yeah, this is the ceremony we're doing. That this is actually a tradition among our family, among our people here in Vrindavan. That rain is very important, and we get rain by the mercy of Indra." การทำพิธีบวงสวงนี้จะเป็นพิธีคล้ายคล้ายคล้ายกับพิธีประเพณีเพราะว่ามันเป็นการที่เราเนี่ยขอพระเมตตาจากพระอินทร์พอพระอินทร์เนี่ยให้ฝนแก่พวกเรา The clouds are the rep their representatives of Indra and when the when we get good rain then we get a lot of grass and it's good to feed all the cows พอน้ำฝนเนี่ยก็เป็นสิ่งที่มีความสำคัญกับเรามากแล้วก็หมู่เมฆเนี่ยเวลาเวลาพระอินทร์พึงพอใจเนี่ยท่านก็จะให้ฝนเนี่ยตกลงมาแล้วก็หลังจากฝนตกเนี่ยเราก็จะมีหญ้าที่ดีเพื่อให้วัวของเราเนี่ยได้กิน So the controller of the rain is Indra we have to show our gratitude we have to show our thanks to King Indra by this sacrifice เราก็อย่างนี้เนี่ยก็พระอินเนี่ยก็ถือว่าเป็นผู้ที่มีบุญคุณกับเรามากเพราะท่านเนี่ยให้ฝนกับพวกเราเพราะฉะนั้นเราก็เลยจะต้องแสดงความกตัญญูต่อท่านโดยการทําพิธีบูชาให้ท่าน If we don't get a good rainfall, then we cannot do our we cannot produce our grains and we cannot farm. Without grain, we cannot live. ถ้าเกิดเราไม่มีฝนเนี่ยก็จะทำให้ก็จะส่งผลกระทบต่อกเกษตรกรรมของเราแล้วก็จะทำให้เราเนี่ยไม่มีไม่มีฟาร์มที่ดีเราจะได้รับผลกระทบอย่างมาก So we have to do this function we do it every year and it helps us to be successful in our farming แต่บอกว่าเราไม่สามารถอยู่ได้หากไม่มีน้ำฝนแล้วก็บอกว่าอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่เราเนี่ยทำมาอยู่ทุกปี And if we don't do it, if we give up doing it just because of lust or greed or fear, then it's not very good. So when Indra heard, when when Lord Krishna heard this, Lord Krishna begins to speak to his father, and he spoke in such a way that he made King Indra very angry. And he was he told the people of Vrindavan. Headed by his father Nanda Maharaj, he said, "You don't, you don't need to do the sacrifice. It's not required." And he said, "I will tell you why." Oh. So the first reason was from the Bhagavad Gita, because in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, "There's no need to worship demigods because any result from worshiping the demigods is going to be temporary." <laughs> ผลของการบูชาเหล่าเทวดาเนี่ยมันเป็นผลที่ไม่ถาวร
So the people who are not very intelligent, they worship demigods and the results is always temporary and, and not very big, will be limited. And then there's another reason why you don't need to do the Shyagya is Krishna says, he said, these demigods, he said, they're not the supreme controller. There's a person above them who is the supreme controller. So whatever, whatever benefit you get from worshipping the demigods is only done with the permission of the Supreme Godhead. And without the permission of the Supreme Lord, you can't get any benefit from these other demigods. And sometimes the demigods become proud and they're thinking they're the supreme. So he, here in this particular case, Krishna wanted to make Indra angry because he knew Indra had become proud. Now Krishna always takes the side of the demigods when the demigods fight the demons. But sometimes the, the demigods become proud and Krishna has to teach them a lesson. So Krishna is going to make Indra angry by stopping his worship, this Indra Yagya, which the cowherd men were supposed to do. So first of all, first of all, Krishna begins to speak about the importance of karma. He said, actually, everything depends on karma. It doesn't depend on Indra. It depends on karma. So people who think like this, they think if you do the work good, you will get good result. This is called the philosophy of karma mimamsa. And this philosophy is actually an atheistic philosophy. So, yeah, the, this philosophy was put forward by a, someone called Jaimini. And Jaimini is teaching that karma is supreme, everything depends on karma. So Krishna does not believe this philosophy, but at the same time, for the purpose of convincing his father not to do the worship of Indra, he's, he's talking about this philosophy. Uh, 
ท่านอ้างปรัชญานี้มาพูดก่อน So, so people who believe this philosophy, they think that if you just do your your work properly, then God has to give you the result. And they think there's no need to worship God. You just have to do your work. Some people say like that. They say work is worship. They're thinking. They don't understand that still you have to worship God. So they, they, but the, these people, they say that instead of worshiping God or any demigod, they should just do their work, and you'll get good results. So Lord Krishna told his father. He said, "I don't think you need to worship any demigod like Indra. You just have to do your work. You just have to do your farming." Krishna ก็ใช้ปรัชญานี้ในการพูดกับบิดาของท่านนะคะโดยบอกว่าฉันไม่คิดข้าพเจ้าไม่คิดว่าท่านเนี่ยจะต้องมานั่งบูชาพระอินทร์อยู่ท่านแค่ทํางานของท่านไปจากความดีที่ท่านทําเนี่ยมันจะทําให้ท่านเนี่ยได้รับผลดีตอบแทนเอง We take our birth according to our past karma. เราเนี่ยได้เกิดตามผลกรรมจากชาติที่แล้วของเรา And everybody, uh, the, the, we leave the body. At the time of leaving the body, we take our karma with us. It will determine our future birth. So everybody is enjoying some happiness and some distress according to their karma. But Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd men, they were saying, "Well, uh, we have to." We have to satisfy the the gods. We have to satisfy the di the different gods like Indra. If we don't satisfy them, we won't get any good result by our activities. So Prabhupada said, actually, it's true. You have to worship the God. If you don't worship God, you won't get good result. So Prabhupada gives a couple of examples to defeat this philosophy that karma is supreme. He said, just like a sick person may go to the doctor and he gets medicine, but even though he gets the best doctor, the best medicine, he still may never get cured. Because you need to get the mercy of the supreme personality of Godhead. It's not just only get the good doctor. Then Prabhupada gives another example. He said, just like 
taking care of children. The mother and father do their best to take care of the child, to keep the child safe and to keep the child healthy. But even though the mother and father try very hard to take care of the child, still something may go wrong, the child may get an accident, he may get sick, or he may become a bad child, he may be, be, have very bad habit, and he may die. Yeah, there was one, one family, they had the nice boy and they tried everything to raise him nice, but the boy became a drug addict and he died. The mother and father tried to do everything for the son to help him, but still, somehow, the, the, the will of God is greater than karma. So although Krishna was arguing about doing good work, doing karma, Nanda Maharaj says, no, you have to, we have to also worship God. And so Nanda Maharaj is saying, we have to worship this man Indra, we have to do the worship of Indra. He is the one to give us rain, so we have to do his puja. But Krishna says, well, no, Indra can only give the results if you do your work. If you don't do your work, he can't get the result. Demigods just can't, they cannot give good results to just anybody. They give the good results to people who do their work. Mm. So, in, so Krishna tells his father, there's no need to worship Indra. Mm. If we do our work, we will get good results. It doesn't matter if we are human beings or demigods, we, we will get the result according to our work. So, So we have to do what is our proper duty and, and we are the Vaishyas. Our duty is to take care of the cows. If we don't do our duty, it's like a, a woman, who, a married woman who's not faithful to her husband. A Brahman, his duty is to study the Vedas. 
And the Kshatriya, their duty is to give protection, to protect all the people. And, and we, the Vaishyas, our duty is to do the farming and to take care of the cows. And the, su the Sudra people, their duty is to do service for everybody else. So Krishna himself, he has come in the Vaishya community. He's with his Nanda Maharaj, is like his father. So his father is in, he's a, a Vaishya, he has many cows, he takes care of the cows. And Krishna is also helping his father take care of cows. So Vaishya, they can they can do as well as taking care of cows, they can also do business and they can do also banking and but the people of Vrindavan, their business was just to take care of cows. They had many cows. Krishna, Krishna's father had nine lakh cows. So then Krishna tells, he's preaching more to his father. He tells him, he said that this whole world comes about due to the three modes of nature. Right, there are three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. And because of the mode of passion, there is creation. And the mode of goodness causes maintenance. And, and the mode of ignorance arranges the destruction of the whole material world. So when the cloud forms in the sky, this is due to the mode of passion. So this, this rain which comes, it's caused by the mode of passion. And when it rains, then we get good result. We get the crops grow, we're able to do nice farming. So nothing to do with Indra. He didn't do anything. We don't get any benefit from Indra. You don't have to worship him. Even if Indra is there, then he's putting the water on the ocean also. There's no need of water on the ocean, but sometimes it rains on the ocean. Uh, 
ดีจริงๆเนี่ยเรนเนี่ยให้น้ําฝนกับมหาสมุทรด้วยซึ่งความจริงแล้วเนี่ยมหาสมุทรเนี่ยไม่มีความจําเป็นสําหรับน้ําเลยสําหรับน้ําฝน They don't need the water at the sea, but still it rains there. And the water is coming there. Nothing to. So we don't need to go any other place. We're we're happy here in Vrindavan. We just stay in the forest of Vrindavan. And our relationship is with Govardhan Hill in Vrindavan. So he said, Krishna tells his father, "I want you to do a sacrifice to satisfy Govardhan Hill and the Brahmanas." And let's well, okay. He said, "Listen." He said, "We will do a separate yagya for the Govardhan Hill." And no. But Krishna said, "No, no, Father. This worship of Govardhan Hill is going to take a lot of time." We have to do it properly. So I want you to use Krishna. Say, I want you to use everything you've got ready for the Indra Yagya. Use it to worship Govardhan Hill and the Brahmanas. So Nanda Maharaj, he loves Krishna very much. So he has to let Krishna get his own way. All right, all right, okay. We'll just worship Govardhan Hill and the Brahmanas. Okay. So Nanda Maharaj asked Krishna, "How do you want us to do this yagya? What do we need to do?" So Krishna said, "You have to make a lot of nice foodstuffs." Made from ghee and grains, and you have to prepare rice and dal, and then halva and pakora and puri. And then you have to use a lot of milk. You make some sweet rice and make uh, rubbery and sweet balls and sandesh and rasgulla and ladu. These are many Bengali sweets are there, like sandesh, rasgulla, very famous in Bengal. So, so Krishna tells his father, you should, you have to invite all the brahmanas to come, and you have to, they will recite the Vedic mantras, and you should give them grains in charity. Food, 
Then you have to decorate all the cows nicely and feed them very nicely. And even give money to the brahmanas. You should give them some charity, give them some money. And then you should take care of even the dogs. In the village there's dogs. They should also be fed. And the, the people, even the low people who are the chandalas, who are considered untouchable, they should also be given nice prasada. <laughs> And then you should give you should get some very nice grass to feed the cows. So it's it's important to take care of everyone, not just only feed some people, but you should take care of all the different living entities, the cows and the dogs and the goats, everyone, they should all be looked after. So, when all the people and living entities, all the animals, when they're all taken care of, then the whole planet will become very nice and everybody will be very happy. So the Vaishyas, they have an important part to play in the economy because they produce the grains to feed everyone. So we give, in, in the Vedic culture, the cow protection is more important than taking care of the dogs and cats. In Krishna consciousness, everybody is important. Whether they're high class or low class, everyone is taken care of. So Lord Chaitanya taught us that just as Krishna is worshipable, also Krishna's land, Vrindavan and Govardhan Hill are also as, just as worshipable as Krishna. So this festival of Govardhan Puja is as good as worshipping Krishna himself. And this festival of Govardhan Puja is called Anakut. Anakut. Ana is the grains, so giving grains to everybody. Anakut. So in Vrindavan, all the temples will observe this festival and they will prepare a lot of prasadam and they will distribute it freely to all, everybody who comes. 
กวรดันปูจาเนี่ยทุกวัดเนี่ยจะทำอาหารเยอะมากแล้วก็จะแจกจ่ายกัน So, yeah, free, free. so Krishna tell, told the people in Vrindavan, no need to do this Indra puja. We we'll just do Govardhan puja. So the people in Vrindavan, the the cowherd men, they, they, they agreed. They followed Krishna's instruction and they prepared everything. And they performed the Govardhan puja, and everybody circumambulated the Govardhan hill. So this is the custom even today. People are going around the Govardhan hill. They're doing circumambulation of Govardhan hill. อันนี้นะคะเป็นสิ่งที่ยังปฏิบัติกันอยู่ถึงปัจจุบันนะคะผู้คนเนี่ยจะไปที่ภูเขาโกวาร์ดานแล้วก็จะเดินรอบภูเขานะคะเดินทักษิณา and and five thousand years ago Krishna all the cowherd men and all the cows they all went round Govardhan Hill to worship Govardhan Hill เมื่อห้าพันปีที่แล้วนะคะในสมัยของคริสต์นาก็เช่นเดียวกันนะคะทุกคนเด็กเลี้ยงวัวชายเลี้ยงวัวหญิงเลี้ยงวัวทุกคนเนี่ยก็จะไปแล้วก็บูชาภูเขาโกวาร์ดันโซเดฮัดโกวาร์ดันฮิลออนเดอะไรท์แฮนด์ไซด์และเด็กเลี้ยงวัวเดินไปและพวกเขาก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินไปและเด็กเลี้ยงวัวก็เดินแล้วพิธีบูชาเนี่ยก็เริ่มขึ้นโดยให้ภูเขาโกวัตันเนี่ยอยู่ความความมือนะคะแล้วก็หัวเนี่ยอยู่ข้างหน้าโดยมีการต
อย่างเช่นก็บอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเอคายเนี่ยไม่ยอมบูชาผู้เผาเวอร์ดันเหมือนกับที่ฉันบูชาเนี่ยเขาผู้นั้นเนี่ยจะไม่มีความสุข And if you don't do the Govardhan Puja, if you if you don't do it, if you think oh, I don't have any money or you're just lazy, you don't want to do it, then it's very dangerous because there are snakes on the Govardhan Hill, and these snakes may bite you. So if you want to have good luck and good good blessings, you have to you you have to, if you want to take care of your cows and be successful in your life, you have to worship this Govardhan hill. So all the people of Vrindavan they worship the Govardhan hill, and then after they followed all of Krishna's instructions, and then afterwards they all returned home. However, Indra is not happy. So we'll hear about what happens, by because of Indra's pride, Indra's anger, that's in the next chapter. Okay. Any questions? Okay, ครูเดชมหาชูคำถามอะไรไหมคะครูเดชมหาชูคำถามอะไรไหมคะครูเดชมหาชูคำถามอะไรไหมคะครูเดชมหาชูคำถามอะไรไหมคะครูเดชมห
he wouldn't give it and he was angry at Krishna and he insulted Krishna. So, there were different demons met Krishna, but they would all, you know, they would criticize Krishna and they would, some demons were killed by Krishna. So, different for different people. Not everybody is a devotee. So they were just fortunate enough to be able to take birth at that time. Yes. Mm. Okay, good. Okay. My second question is regarding also from your class this morning that you were giving, Brahad Bhagavatam, the Shrimad Bhagavatam, where oh. you were mentioning that, uh, you know, there are a lot of people in the material world, uh, they make the mistake of uh, asking for some material things from the Supreme Lord instead of serving the Lord or uh, even though Gurudev me, despite of being a devotee, I guarantee the same. But then when a tough situation arrives, then choose the material thing. Of course, telling the Lord, definitely my service is by heart all the way. But is that like a test or a test of faith, I should say? No, I think it's your attachment. It's your material attachment. According to your material attachment, you ask Krishna for different things. Because you're in the bodily concept of life, so you ask for things in relation to your body and your family and your community. Okay, have we got any questions from any Thai devotees here? Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have uh, from Chaya Madhaji and also Dharma Raj Puruji. Okay, Chaya Madhaji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Dandavar Panam. Please accept my humble obeisances. Okay, I'm going to อ่าที่อาจารย์ธรรมาราบ่าเอ่อเวลาเราอุทิศเสร็จเสร็จเราหลับใช้อ่ะค่ะปกติเนี่ยก็คือว่าเราจะต้องไม่มีเอ่อความ
uh, have that much interest or they don't really want Krishna that much, then if we go and give them, then is that okay or how will it be? Will it that be any karma? You don't get karma for giving people Krishna. If, if you're giving people Krishna conscious books, that's devotional service. And devotional service is not going to get you karma. When you distribute books, you're going back to Godhead. By distributing books about Krishna, you're getting rid of all your karma. So, if you keep distributing books, You'll get rid of all your karma and you'll become a pure devotee. So you keep trying to distribute books. Where are you going to distribute books, Jaya? Uh, uh, I distribute by my uh, own Facebook fan page. I post in some about um, mode of goodness uh, in about content in Thai language also. And I post about um, who is uh, interesting about Bhagavad Gita in Thai English book. Um, in um, Sanskrit group in uh, Thailand. Mm -hmm. okay. Then um, some people um, engage with my fan page and um, order about some some books there. Very it's good as cheap Guru Maharaj. Very good, yeah. Very nice service. I, I try to be doing in online every day to oh. post some content in English and Thai also. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very nice. Yeah, please. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'm Krish glad to hear that. Yeah, Krishna will bless you more and more. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'm trying to do more and more. Very good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, Dharmaraj has a question. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Dhanamad Pranam. Hare Krishna. I have one question, Guru Maharaj. Indra offers a lot. What are the reasons that Krishna forgives Indra? And if we make offense, how to get free from offenses? Well, we can get free from offenses by doing devotional service. Especially by chanting the holy name. Chanting the holy name destroys sinful reactions. But if we offend a devotee, we have to get forgiven by the devotee. We have to go to the devotee and beg forgiveness. But 
Right? You have to, if we offend a Vaishnava, then it's very serious. We have to go to the Vaishnava and serve him and ask him, please forgive me, I've offended you, like that. Okay. What was it, what was the other question? To get forgiven for offenses and what's the first question? Archana? Yep. How how Indra get uh, forgiveness? How does Indra get forgive? Well, he had to come to Krishna after he tried to destroy Vrindavan, then he had to come to Krishna. You will hear in the Krishna book it describes Indra came and he begged, he worshipped Krishna and he begged forgiveness. He came there with Surabi Kao and Surabi Kao and Indra, they both worship Krishna. There's one place there where Krishna was worshipped, it's called Govinda Kund. And that Kund was when they did the Abhishek of Krishna. Okay. Uh -huh. So, Tapodivya Mataji, any question? Mm -hmm. Mataji. Actually, she, she wanted to update you about what's happening in Kaolak. Now, now we have uh, devotees from Bangkok, like five of them, Rogan Proji and few devotees from uh, Nimai Proji and all, they are there. So now they are having Harinam, they go out Harinam and also house program, book distribution and all. Okay. So she would like to update you on that. No. Because I said last time. Okay, very good. Okay, any questions? You are blessing already. Yeah. You are blessing. Yeah, I give blessings already. Any any question? Himalata? Himalata, any question? Himalata Mataji. Ke prashna Yeah. No, no question. Actually, Gurudev, I have one question. Yes, sir. When we, we heard about if we offense the holy name, then we, we chant the holy name, we offense devotee, then we ask for their forgiveness or serve them. When we offense the holy place, what what we should do? Well, you have to serve the holy place. If you've committed offense to the holy place, you should serve the holy place. You should do some serve, how to serve the holy place. You clean it, you get a brush and sweep, you pick up the garbage. Or, or you, you, you do some, maybe you distribute some prasadam for the people who live in the holy place. Okay. 
you can offer obeisances, parikrama in the holy place. Sometimes we do parikrama around the Govardhan hill and they will do dandabhat parikrama. They will offer the obeisances right the way around the Govardhan hill. And they will come every day and for one or two hours every day they will do the dandabhats and then they will come back the next day and begin from where they left off. And in this way they go around the whole hill to do dandabhat parikrama. So offering obeisances is very good. โอเคนะครับอืมพระนั้นนวทธรรมว่าการเอ่อถ้าเกิดว่าเราทําอาบัตสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์เนี่ยเราควรทําอย่างไรเพื่อเป็นการ
จัดวันเฉลิมฉลองวันนี้กันนะคะแล้วก็ศิลปะเนี่ยก็มีความยึดติดมากกับภูเขาโกวาร์ดันนะคะถึงแม้ตอนที่ท่านแบบว่าจะทิ้งล่างแล้วเนี่ยท่านยังบอกว่าท่านอยากจะไปที่ภูเขาโกวาร์ดันสวัสดี Very important for us to also worship the Govardhan Hill and offer prayers to Govardhan Hill. And the Gopis, the Gopis, they describe Govardhan Hill that he is the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. <laughs> He is called Hari Das Avarya. Hari Das. Hari Das means the servant of Lord Hari. So his Hari Das Avarya means the very best of all the servants of Lord Hari. มีชื่อหนึ่งนะคะคือชื่อว่า Hari Das Avarya นะคะ Hari Das แปลว่าเป็นผู้รับใช้ของพระองค์เจ้าฮารีกวาเซียแปลว่าดีที่สุดมหาราชยุดสเตียร์ was called Hari Das and Prahlad Maharaj was also Hari Das but the Govardhan Hill he's Hari Das Avarya he's the very best of all the servants of Lord Hari มหาราชยุดสเตียร์นะคะก็ได้ชื่อว่าเป็น Hari Das เช่นกันนะคะรวมถึงปราลัดมหาราชด้วยนะคะก็ได้ชื่อว่า Hari Das แต่ว่าในบรรดา Hari Das ทั้งหลายเนี่ยผู้เขาโกวาร์ดันเนี่ยจะได้ชื่อว่าเป็นผู้รับใช้ของฮารีที่ดีที่สุด So why is he the best? ทำไมทำไมผู้เขาโกวาร์ดันถึงเป็นผู้รับใช้ที่ดีที่สุด What service does he do for Krishna? Who knows? ทำไมทำไมโกวาร์ดันผู้เขาโกวาร์ดันถึงดีที่สุดใครรู้คะว่าเขาเนี่ยทำการรับใช้กิชนาอะไรทำไมเขาถึงดีที่สุดชายาดีโน่ชายามาตุจีทราบไหมคะเพราะว่าเป็นตัวแทนของกิชนาแล้วก็เป็นผู้ที่นำความอุดมสมบูรณ์มาสู่โลกนี้แบบเหมือนระหว่างที่ปากวันเป็นเป็นพลังงานใช่ไหมคะเหมือนเราประวัติการเนี่ยแบบเราจับต้องได้เป็นผู้ให้ผลิตผลทางทางการเกษตรเป็นความอุดมสมบูรณ์ให้กับโควัตรัตเมื่ออันนี้พี่ตอบในความคิดของพี่ค่ะ she said because uh, Govardhan here provide uh, provide everything provide uh, the fruits and trees like that for Krishna to use During his past time in Vrindavan. Yes, right. He g i v e g o v e r d a n Hill. You get nice water. I, there used to in Krishna's time there were waterfalls on the g o v e r d a n Hill, and the cows and Krishna and they, they would drink the water, and they could bathe in the water, fresh cool water. แล้วก็ถูกต้องนะคะก็คือเป็นเพราะว่า Govardhan เนี่ยให้ทุกอย่างเลยนะคะไม่ว่าจะเป็นน้ำเป็นสมัยก่อนสมัยกฤษณะเนี่ยภูเขาโกวาร์ดันมีน้ำตกอยู่ด้วยนะคะแล้วก็จะมีหญ้าผลไม้ต้นไม้ทุกอย่างอย่างอุดมสมบูรณ์ and then grass for the cows there's very nice grass growing on the g o v e r d a n hill to feed the cows แล้วก็จะมีหญ้าอย่างดีนะคะที่จะอยู่ที่บนภูเขาโกวาร์ดันเพื่อให้ And there are caves on the Govardhan Hill where Krishna could take shelter. Sometimes, if it will rain or if it's very hot, he can go in the cave. It's cool. And then there is also fruits growing there, and there's also different vegetables and roots which are also good to eat. For the cows and for the people, also. And then there will be flowers, flowers, like this, that will give good fruit. The people can eat it. 
And of course the Govardhan Hill gave protection for all the people from the wrath of Indra. Because when Indra sent all the clouds to flood Vrindavan, Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill. So this way Govardhan Hill is a wonderful devotee. He's a devotee and he's also Krishna. Okay. So no more questions. So we will stop here tonight. Thank you, Archana. Thank you, Gurudev. <laughs> Can I ask one question, Gurudev? Yes. Yeah, Raja Raja Sudhya, okay. What question? <laughs> I just I for, I listened before that Govardhan Govardhan story that some Rishi carry him and and later he drove him there and slowly slowly the Govardhan becomes smaller and I I just could not remember all the stories so can you tell a little bit why Govardhan is getting smaller than before I, I kind of forget the story the name of the Rishi also yeah uh, I also can't remember the name of the Rishi but anyway he picked up the, he agreed he wanted to take the Govardhan Hill to his place where he meditates. So he saw the Govardhan over in the Himalayas and he wanted to take it to his place where he meditates at Benares. So Govardhan said he would go with the Rishi but he said wherever you stop I will stay there. You can only pick me up one time. And so Rishi agreed. So Rishi was carrying the Govardhan Hill, but then when they came over Vrindavan, then the Rishi somehow, he wanted to have a answer the call of nature. He wanted to pass water or something, you know. So he stopped and he put down the Govardhan Hill and he went to relieve himself to pass water. And when he came back to pick up the Govardhan Hill, the Govardhan Hill refused. He said, no, I told you, he said, wherever you put me down, I'm staying here. And so it was arranged that go, the, go, the, the Rishi, he stopped. He stopped when he came over Vrindavan. Because Govardhan recognized this is Vrindavan and Govardhan knew this is where Lord Krishna is going to appear. So Govardhan said, I should wait here, I should be here. When Krishna comes, I can take part in Krishna's pastimes. So the yogi could not pick up Govardhan again. So he cursed Govardhan. He said that you're not going to come with me, then I curse you that every day you will get smaller the size of one mustard seed. And when the, when the Govardhan hill becomes flat, then that will be Kali Yuga in full force. เพราะฉะนั้นพุทธิก็ถามถึงเรื่องราวประวัติความเป็นมาของภูเขาโกวัตันนะคะว่าทําไมทุกวันเนี่ยจะต้องเอ่อมีขนาดที่เล็กลง
คือค่าบอกแล้วว่าหยุดตรงไหนนะคะก็ต้องลงแต่สาเหตุที่ผู้ขอบกวัตันเนี่ยจะหยุดที่นั่นนะคะเพราะว่าผู้ขอบกวัตันเนี่ยรู้แล้วว่าอันนี้เนี่ยถึงบรินดาบันแล้วและรู้ว่าในอนาคตเนี่ยกฤษณาจะมาทําลีลาที่นี่ผู้ขอบกวัตันก็เลยทําให้ฤาษีท่านเนี่ยมีอาการปวดปัสสาวะนั่นเองนะคะแล้วเสร็จในนี้ด้วยความโมโหเนี่ยฤาษีท่านนี้เนี่ยก็เลยสาบแช่งผู้ขอบกวัตันบอกว่าทุกวันเนี่ยเธอจะต้องมีขนาดที่ลบลดลงเท่ากับหนึ่งเม็ดงานทุกวันแล้วเมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่ที่ถึงกาลียุคเนี่ยเราจะรู้ได้เลยว่าตอนนั้นเนี่ยภูเขาก็จะลาบไปกับพื้นคือจะจะไม่เป็นในรูปภูเขานั่นหมายความว่ามันถึงกาลียุคแบบสุดท้ายเนี่ยโอเค very good thank you very much โอเคสุลภรบุปาดคีจัยสุลภรบุปาดคีจัยสุลภรบุปาดคีจัยสุลภรบุปาดคีจัย